Today we're talking about Italy's and Germany's shared government makeup. Because despite the fact that last time they shared notes on how a government should look, it didn't work out so well, they're at it again. This is because not all democracies are the same. And in fact, four-fifths of democracies in the world are using a pretty radically different system than Americans use. Proportional representation. And no, I'm not talking about those democracies like the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, where, huh, it looks like everyone voted for Kim Jong-un again to stay in power for four more years. Or Russia, where Putin just surprised everyone by securing a victory over political prisoner number 172. This system is used by almost all European countries besides the Vatican City and Britain. Both countries either looked over by lords or the lord. So yes, proportional representation, a method that in theory is good, until you ask the guy who laid out the districts for Wisconsin, the guy who redistricted Texas, or the guy who decided to split the Dakotas so that Republicans could send four representatives to the House of Representatives instead of two. Wow, most gerrymandered district is the New York's best pizza of middle America. So what is proportional representation? Well, for whatever reason, John Cleese, also known as Q, Ah yes, the legendary 007 wit, or at least half of it, put together one of the most self-aware public service announcements I have ever seen. Yes, he will be introducing us to one of the most important gadgets a government can have. Proportional, I'm sorry, oh, proportional representation. And don't complain to me if it's boring, because I know in advance what I'm going to say, so the level of boredom I shall suffer during the next ten minutes will be really appalling, compared even with yours. Anyway, I expect there's some snooker on another channel, probably on all three. So, proportional representation, what's it all about? What is it all about? Well, basically, instead of voting for a president like one does in the US, you vote for a party. Now, that sounds like a very small difference, especially considering the fact that, I've heard, party might play a small part in American politics. So what does this mean? Well, once you vote for your parties, their votes get distributed into seats in parliament, where each party's leader gets the first seat, the second in command gets the second seat, and if your party is lucky enough to get a few hundred seats, maybe the summer intern gets one if you're short on people. This is why reports like this happen. As recent opinion polls had predicted, the far-right anti-immigrant alternative for Germany, which wants to close mosques and stop immigration, took 13%, meaning more than 80 seats in Parliament. Yet they're disorganised. By Monday morning, the woman who'd led them to this position said she was so angry with the direction of the party that she would not be joining their bloc. That might sound super odd, but bear with me, because that just happened in Germany. So you have a limited number of seats and you dole them out as a proportion of the vote. Where did the leaders come in? I mean, when we want to negotiate with Germany, Donald Trump doesn't go over there and sit down with all 709 members of the Bundestag. Is there a separate election to vote for your Berlusconis, your Merkels, or your Allons? No, usually one party gets over 50% of the vote and the leader of that party is your leader. But there is a problem you sometimes encounter in these cases that we've recently experienced in Germany and we're currently seeing in Italy. Nobody won. That's right, in the political equivalent to handing out participation trophies, politicians had to work together to create coalitions and figure out who really deserved the majority. So let's focus in a little on what these debates looked like for Germany. Germany descended into political crisis today as Chancellor Angela Merkel called for new elections after talks to form a coalition government collapsed. Now, I realize that that's a lot to take in in nine seconds, so let's just break it down. In the most recent election, nobody won. Although Angela Merkel's the Christian Democratic Union Party got 28% of the seats, which might sound bad until you realize that that's the highest amount out of any of the parties that won. That said, 30% of the population running the country doesn't really sound democratic, unless you're living in the United States right now. So what do you do? Well, as the leader of the biggest small fish in a big sea, you can either negotiate to form a coalition government that can have 50% of the seats, or you can float to the top and hope for re-election. 
Unfortunately for her, if she formed a coalition with the second largest party, she would still have less than 50% of the votes. So she had to create a voting coalition of three or more parties, which would be pretty hard considering this would be like herding cats, dogs, and mice and trying to get them to all agree on the circle of life. Back to Q to talk about why this all might be a problem. Well, some people claim peacetime coalition governments are weak and indecisive. Right, well, let's look at Europe again, shall we? Let's examine some of the countries that have been suffering from weak, indecisive coalition governments. Germany, Holland, Sweden, poor, wretched, enfeebled things. Denmark, Switzerland, they make your heart bleed, don't they? Norway, they're on the scrap heap too. If only they could all get rid of their weak, indecisive coalition governments, perhaps they could have a standard of living like ours. Thank God, Britain's got strong, decisive, one-party government, which, in 1985, achieved for the first time in our history a lower standard of living than coalition-riddled old Italy. So yes, this style of proportional representation might create weaker coalitions, but it does encourage stronger third parties because if you can surpass a minimum number of seats, your party gets representation, which leads to some interesting parties getting on the ballot, like the pirate party Germany that got over 100,000 votes in the last election. Hey, I like their policies on redistributive taxes. So what ended up happening in Germany? Well, Merkel's party, the Christian Democratic Union, was trying to make an alliance with the Free Democratic Party and the Green Party, which would just eke her over the 50% mark. Unfortunately for her, because all of the other large parties had refused to work with her, she was having a little bit of trouble being a Christian right-wing politician connecting with the Green Party and the Free Democratic Party. And after about a week of negotiations, the leader of the Free Democratic Party said he wouldn't work with Merkel, citing irreconcilable differences on immigration and the environment. So this put Merkel in a tricky situation. She could either reach out to the alternative for Germany who were legit Nazis and see if she can find common ground with them and the Green Party, which unless they can convince Tesla to make a line of panzers probably won't work out too well. So we're just going to put a quick X over them because yeah, that's not happening. This means that to have control over anything, she had to grow. Unfortunately for her, this party, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, had said they wouldn't align with her after her party got destroyed in the general elections. And if she worked with the other two parties, she would still not have 50% control. So what do you do? How much closer are we to actually forming a government? The SPD has now the Social Democrats, uh, the second biggest party in Germany, who Merkel has been wooing for a couple of weeks now. Uh, have basically said, well, we are willing to discuss, among other options, an actual real coalition government, a full-fledged government uh, with uh, Angela Merkel. My gosh, you think American governments are slow? 180 days after the election and they're still making their government. Anyways, these talks succeeded and it ended up being a coalition of the Christian Democratic Union, the Christian Social Union of Bavaria, and the Social Democratic Party. Wow, that's a lot of Christianity for a country that I generally thought to be more progressive than a hipster bar on Noam Chomsky night. Now to Italy, a country where the debates are currently happening. Ah, yes, Italy, a country that is so anti-immigrant they chose to look like a boot. What happened in the next couple of weeks, Steve, just to try and clarify that, is that these kind of informal talks begin, and by the end of March, around the 23rd, they will actually decide who's going to be speaker, leader of both the chambers of parliament here in Rome. At that point, Sergio Mattarella will take over and try and negotiate formally with the various parties and blocs to figure out if they can get to the 50% majority that's required to govern here. Oh no, if they can't work anything out, Italy might not have a functioning federal government. Which changes what exactly? Sorry I'm being so tough on Italy, but my gosh, if it weren't for Greece, they'd be the flashing red weak spot of the EU. So first, let's talk about what the basic voting situation is in Italy. There are three main coalitions instead of two, although two of them have pretty simple names, center right and center left. Gee, where'd you come up with those? The third party is a newer one, the Five Star Movement, 
points for creativity, although center right and center left you are not. It was only created in 2009 by a comedian and a blogger, but boy did they do a good job in that last election. Wow, no mention of Christianity in any of their names? In Italian cities there are more paintings of Jesus than there are stop signs. Although, how did this election end up working? Silvio Berlusconi's center-right bloc taking the largest number of seats in the Italian election, the anti-establishment five-star movement, seemed to have performed better than expected, pushing the center-left into third place. However, no group is seeing winning an overall majority. In Italy, where these debates are currently happening, let's go to the election results. So Italy currently has two coalitions that already exist. There's the center-right and the center-left coalitions. So let's see what happened. Well, here are the results. So as you can see, things are split pretty evenly between the Five Star Movement, the center-right coalition, and the center-left coalition. But quick shout out to the other parties, because while some are alarmed by the Nazi levels of immigrant fear in the Italian government, one seat was won by the South American Union Italian Immigrants Party. So, buena suerte to that individual. Anyways, this equality in votes has led to a bit of a stalemate as everyone has a pretty large bargaining power. If it took Germany half a year to make its government, we can probably predict that the Italians will have their government set up just in time for the next election. So let's go back to the results. Well, in this case, it looks like this might be the center-right's leadership to lose. Because not only are they the largest party, but the odds of the Five Star Movement and the center-left movement agreeing on anything are infinitesimally small. Only problem... Five Star have vowed not to do a coalition deal with anyone else. In a country in which you can't do government without a coalition, it leads many to wonder if they would prefer not to be in government at all. Alright, so they're just trolls then. Well, I guess a party founded by a comedian and a blogger might have more 4chan-esque values. So what say you, left center party? Well, no one's even writing about that, as the center-right party would much rather negotiate with the far-right party. Although, the Five Star Movement is saying it will only join a coalition if their leaders can be the leader of Italy. And good luck with that one. That would be like Facebook acquiring WhatsApp and then letting Brian Action take over for Mark Zuckerberg. So no one knows how these negotiations are going to go yet, but there is one more option people think might happen. If there is no majority coalition in Italy's parliament, it could be dissolved, leading to another round of elections. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe by clicking on my eagle, or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button down below. And remember to give me a thumbs up.